Who has the worst section in the video? <laughs> Hello YouTube, my name is Ricardo Lino and I'm a wheel addict. If you've seen any of my last videos, you know that my knee is still not good so I can't really skate. But I can still make skate videos, right? So that's exactly what we're gonna do today. 2017 was an amazing video for skate videos. There was a lot of VODs coming out and 2018 is already starting really good. So I know there's a new video coming out. It's going to be the adapting video. And I guess the best person to make any questions about it, it's the guy that made it, right? So let's make the first question to Kevin. Kevin, for how long have you been doing the adapt video? So um, I filmed the movie over the time span of two years, um, but there's some footage in it that is maybe a little bit older because we kind of started this project in the beginning. I was planning to do uh, an edit with Leifi only for the Buddhist. I just finished Clemens, his Buddhist part. I filmed that for a year and I love the whole idea of filming a whole year with one person so much I, w I wanted to do it with somebody else and Levy was becoming this young kid that was skating really really good so I wanted to do it and Peter really supported it and he was like hey if you guys want to go somewhere like to a little trip to Barcelona or somewhere else I would like to support you guys because I think it's cool that he also gets the attention outside of Adept and then a couple weeks later he called me up and he goes like Kev would you like to make a team video? And I was like, wow, that is an awesome idea. I never done that. Nobody does it anymore. I really like the idea. Fuck it. Yes, let's do it. So that's how it started. And that was 2015, I think in November, something like that. And then we got together with Christmas with the Dutch guys. We talked about it. And we said, yes, let's do this. But well, I was living at that point in Paris. So for the first couple of months, we didn't film that much yet. And then when I got back living in Amsterdam, we just started filming. So um, two years, the oldest footage is definitely two and a half years old. But like full-time filming, let's say a year and a half, but maybe two years, you know? So a good amount of time. How does it feel for a Dutch to make a team video for a brand from Holland? Must, be, must feel good, right? So how was it to film for a Dutch company? Um, I don't think it matter where the company is from, if it's uh, American or uh, whatever, you know? I don't think that matters in this industry nowadays because uh, we're a small industry. So we're all kind of like the same, I think, personally. Um, did it affect anything? I don't think so. It's a small company. That's what I liked. Uh, Peter and Olga are an hour away from me. So it was easy to uh, have contact with them. Uh, I can go by, we can sit down and talk about stuff and write stuff down. But they mainly gave me the free hand to do this project. Um, so I had an, um, an open, open hand, I guess you call it. Uh, in this whole thing and um, yeah I think just them living in the same country actually made it easy to plan stuff um, also with the team if the guys from America came over it's cool that they can see their bosses really easy you know because they live close by uh, other than that I think it's all the same if I do work for an American company or uh, a Spanish company or whatever you know, I think that's all the same I kind of got injured the other day so I have to make it this question was there a lot of people getting injured or did anyone even got injured during the, the filming for the video? Um, what was the worst fall? What was the worst moment skating that you filmed? The injuries in this video were... There were always injuries. I think there's always injuries happening in a movie. Uh, they were not as much, luckily, um, as... Uh, well, you cannot hope for it, so I don't know how to say that. But, um, so, um, Russell had a couple injuries. He kind of slammed his ribs uh, twice in the whole project. He fell within one hour on his same ribs in Nantes. 
trying to do a kink grill with two different tricks. So he was out for a week and a half when he was in, on the Euro trip. I got on a shitty butt. He cut back. You know, he, he took some rest, smoked his uh, medicines back home. And uh, then he got back and uh, he was excited, you know, because he was the first time in Europe. So he was uh, excited to go do some stuff. Um, then uh, our boy Sam, he, um, he had, uh, I think, three heel bruises during the whole uh, project. That kind of slowed him down. Uh, <coughs> doing uh, a lot of stuff uh, eventually we had a couple of gaps and wall rides that we needed to do that he did the last actually the last two days of filming his project we kind of like saved it me and, and sam went to barcelona two times the first time there was a lot of rain the second time we planned everything out like day by day with tricks with tricks and we ended up doing the uh the last day is the hardest clips like a big gap and a wall ride on the last couple of days to save everything for not getting his little uh, uh heels uh, hurt again he also broke his hand during uh the two years that didn't happen while skating it happened in a fight so uh shit happens when you're in Holland and you're young I'm proud of him because he uh, definitely won the competition so, uh, some people got bit by this little feisty dog but they're not really injuries uh, Leifi broke his hand somewhere he didn't know when it happened yeah well the worst injury was definitely our boy Rick uh, Rick and you will see it in the video made one of the worst slams you're gonna see in in skating it was horrible um if you see the video you'd be like what what that's stupid blah blah how can that happen it was just miscalculation uh, rick is a really intelligent guy that looks at every possibility of stuff going wrong and all that stuff uh and this was just i think miscalculation on his side i don't know how he doesn't know how he didn't see the clip yet uh he's actually yesterday he got back on his skate so after half a year um he actually wrote on his normal on his hyper skates um rick fell so hard with a 540 over stairs and a fence and he landed in a pole that his um lag bone went through his hip um and he was in hospital for Two and a half weeks in Paris, we actually went home and my boy Stun and Tom from Paris and the parents of my girlfriend over there that live in Paris went to visit him a couple of times when we were already back in Holland. I felt guilty. I felt guilty as fuck um, to have him in the hospital while filming for me. Uh, even if he wanted to do the trick himself, he came with the trick. I felt guilty. And then we had to go back to Holland and he was still in the hospital but it's all good and uh he's doing well he's recovering well he'll be back on his skates doing hammers in a couple of years for sure because he's determined to do it so not a lot of injuries just some stupid injuries and one horrible horrible fucking injury where was these videos shot i know that you made a few trips for it. I know that you filmed some stuff in Paris, you filmed some stuff in the States with Julian, uh, obviously in Holland. What else? What other trips did you do for this video? So the place where we filmed for the video is, uh, we went to Paris a lot because my girlfriend's parents live there, we have a house to stay. Uh, we went to uh, Lille in France, uh, of course different places in Holland. We went to London. We went to Denmark twice. Uh, me and Levy went to visit Russell in San Diego for a month and uh, Julian Ba in Atlanta for a month. Uh, when we were there, we visited LA, some other places just outside of San Diego. And we went to Chattanooga, Tennessee. Uh, I, I gotta say that weekend was my favorite weekend. Uh, the Tennessee vibe was real. Ray Cronenberg and his uh, girlfriend uh, Annie uh, hosted us really well. And uh, I probably forgot places where we went to, but it's been two years, you know? So a lot of places, a lot of cool new spots and a lot of cool new people. So, oh, we went to Nantes in France. Shout out to the Rats. La Rats. 
is the video going to be HD? Because I know that until at least one year ago, you were shooting a lot with VX cameras or VX style cameras. And I know that you have some HD cameras. I don't know if they're tape cameras or if they record to a card. But if I remember well, one of the first videos from Adapt was even recorded with the red camera. So my question is, how does Adapt deals with it? Like, how do they see it? Because obviously they know what type of videos you do and if they ask you to do it, it's because they like what you're doing. But it's kind of weird. What's the deal here? For this uh, video, I didn't use a, uh, uh, before this video, I never used a VX. Uh, back, back in the day, I used to film on a GL2 for the American people or for the European people, an XM2. Uh, but I upgraded uh, myself, I think it was Winter Clash 2011. I bought the old camera of Chess Sense, um, and that's a long time ago. Um, I bought this camera from him. It's a Sony um, HDR FX1E. This is actually not the one of Chess Sense. In the meantime, I uh, I bought a different one. I'm actually thinking maybe this is the one of Chess Sense. I don't remember. Um, so I've been filming with this for the last five, six years, I think. Um, it does still have a tape in it, um, so uh, that is correct. I used to film on tape a lot. I love it, um, also because I'm always afraid of losing my footage um, if something crashes, like if a hard drive crashes or something, I'm always afraid that I lose something. So with the tapes, I got all my tapes from from the uh, from the 90s I still have everything on tape so I have everything it's kind of like a safety backup um, so I filmed let's say 80% no more I think 90% of the movie is filmed with this but in America um, something happened with my camera and I got a scratch on the lens on the inside of this lens not on my uh, fisheye lens, but on this one. If I was filming without the fisheye, you never saw it. Like you didn't see anything. If I put the fisheye on it, and because of the, the, the round glass, I think the image uh, changes. So uh, you saw in the middle of the, if this is your, the fisheye, like in the middle, there was a smudge. So in the beginning I thought it was my lens, so I tried to clean everything, and I never found it. And then I found that there was a scratch in the lens that caused the, the problem. So I was already planning to upgrade myself after the movie to a different camera. And so I had to do it during the movie. So I went searching, searching, searching online for uh, a Panasonic camera, the ones that even used for a long time. Um, uh, AJ and um, um, David Sizemore filmed that with it. The old fine streets were filmed with it. So a lot of people use this camera. A lot of skateboarders use this camera. It's the Panasonic one. It's it's a really good and decent camera. Um, so I went searching online and I found this really awesome deal. A guy from England sold two of them with a lot of extras, mics, uh, a dolly, a tripod, everything for 900 euros. So um, I had half the money and then my girlfriend paid half for my birthday part, uh, present of the rest of the cameras because she knows how much this means to me and everything um in return i bought her her first uh, tattoo machine she's a tattoo artist uh so i think we both support our um, hobbies a lot together so um the rest of the film is finished on this camera um i got two of them now too I had the fish eye. I had to buy a couple of different rings to put the fish eyes on it. Um, a little bit more vignette. Uh, I'm trying to fix that for later projects because I'm not the biggest fan of the big vignette. Um, so yeah, these two cameras are the ones that I used to film the whole movie. And also the reason why I like to film with these cameras instead of like, for example, a DSLR like this because you can film with this and it has beautiful images. but 
I think it's too sharp. Like these cameras are a little bit uh, sharp and these uh, two bad boys, they still have a little bit of that grainy, edgy look in it. And for me personally, I mean, everybody have, has a different opinion on it, um, but I like my footage to be raw. Like, uh, I don't fuck with like stabilizers while filming. Uh, it can look beautiful because with some people it works, but for me personally, I don't like that. I like it raw. Just make sure you hold your camera tight and hold it steady like that, you know, like, and just the weight of it for me, that works a lot. Like if I'm skating with the fish on it, it's a good way to have a good grip and you just learn, I think with it. Um, so um, yeah, that's the reason why I want to use these cameras. If you had to choose your favorite trick in the video, what would it be? Come on, give us a teaser, just the, the best trick. You can show us. Favorite trick I filmed, um, I think that is always a hard question with a big project like this, because there's always tricks that you like of somebody, but that might not be the hardest trick. Or, yeah, how do you say? I don't know. Like, it's really hard to pick. But there's definitely one clip that I just love the whole scenery of. It's not even the hardest trick. It's just everything about how I filmed it is probably my favorite trick. Um, there's definitely a trick of a hick. I'm not going to show you that because it's this ender that is... Um, one of the s sickest things he did it was first try he just fucking went for it and he did it like only Rick is a guy that can do that but you just have to see the movie for that uh, but my favorite trick like shot wise and everything um, is going to be this one and this is probably uh, the one that I love the most in the whole movie This is the part that I love the most where I just zoom out and you see a typical California Valley with the fog and everything. I just love it. And after that, a fucking golf cart came and pulled Levy up all the way upstairs. So he didn't even have to walk upstairs. And now the question that no one ever wants to do. So I'm going to do it under the table. <laughs> Who has the worst section in the video? Who work the worst I like I don't mean to be rude to anyone but if someone didn't work as good as the others who was it who has the worst part in this video oh the toe for sitting on the table you know uh, I really enjoy this question I think it's uh, the way you explain it because if you just say who is the worst part that's kind of horrible but you said who didn't work the best for this for their part um, nobody nobody did not work for that part every skater worked their fucking asses off for this video um but if i have to choose of course there's two skaters that i think could have done better one of them is rick rick uh, rick was really busy in the beginning of this project to finish school um so he didn't have that much time to skate also if you know rick rick is a really um hard skater he doesn't skate a skate park to warm up or little leads to warm up he goes for the hammers he does likes he likes to do big gaps wall rides the sauces on handrails or the hopping kinks and all that stuff um so it's not like easy to go skate with him it's like sometimes you just went skating with him and film one trick a day but that trick would have been like one of his enders he said in the beginning i was like i want a profile with only enders i think we we got that covered for like 65 percent um so um and then he got injured he got injured in august uh in paris really bad hospital everything uh and he broke his hip uh so i think we can both agree that if the stars were all right with no school and no injuries his part could have been maybe the best of the whole movie 
but you know you cannot have everything but he fucking gave everything for it um, even when he was injured he was still thinking about how can we make this part the best thing um, the second one is Sam Sam Croft um, is um, uh, a park skater um, he's a really good park skater that um, doesn't skate that much street he has before this movie he had one adapt profile for like three years ago and during this movie we made a um, Julian Boscate um, promo with some clips that I filmed for this project that I thought nah man this guy can skate way better he's a really talented skater uh, really technical also because he's the tall motherfucker um, he can do his handrails really easy um, but he had to find out he had to figure this whole new type of skating out because he's used to go skate parks and do first try fakie with 1080s and really huge 900s and 720s and all that stuff he is really technical on the coping um, but also with spins to grinds and stuff he's really good with that uh, so we try to find some some transition stuff on street for him and uh, trying to find that uh, technical stuff to do on ledges and stuff and on rails um, but we both agree that he could do better uh, now he got to touch the feeling because every trip we did every time we went skating I saw his his confidence and his tricks going up and up and up so I think if we start filming for a new project his profile is even going to be better but there is no worst part there is no skater that didn't work hard for their profile. The only worst part is my part. I wanted to get tricks in this movie. I got one, and it's kind of shitty. I'm all injured, you know. You know, you know. You feel me right now, dog. You feel me. You got pain. We all got pain. Old skaters, fuck it. I'll just film, you know. But the team, they work their fucking asses off, and everything is, in my opinion, top notch. So, back to you, Lino. Wait, let, check this question. I need to make him this question. Why are you making a DVD in an era that everyone makes digital format videos? Like people are releasing VODs or they're releasing like even on USB flash drives. Why are you doing a DVD? Like all the work that you need to, to do for like a DVD menu and all that. Is it that important to make a DVD or it's like something that Adapt really wants or is you that want it? Why? Okay. It's not really old school because it's not tapes, so it's mid school. But are you going to go new school? Are you going to release it also in a digital format? Will people be able to buy a VOD or it's only in mid school? On the question why we are doing a DVD and not a VOD, uh, as you can see we're trying to burn a DVD right now with my boy Marnix. You might know him from uh, previous um, yes. movies like Super Muscles or Aorta. And um, he helped me a lot with The Breakfast Club. So um, we are making a VOD, uh, but because me and Peter are pretty old, we, uh, we like to make uh, an actual physical copy of a DVD. So we're making a limited edition of DVDs. Um, if the program decides to work with me and actually burn the DVD because it's so outdated stuff doesn't work anymore it's been a pain in the ass so I don't know if I still like my decision of making a DVD but the VOD is going to be out on the 29th and the DVD too you can order it through the DAP site and uh, the only thing we can do is sing burn David day burn disco burn, inferno DVD burn <laughs> And I didn't forget this one, I just wanted to leave it for last. What's the name of the video? We still don't know the name of the video, so what's the name of the Adapt Team video? The name of the video has been a <coughs> ongoing conversation between me and Peter. Um, of course you want to have a name for the video. It's always important, like people, you know, uh, important videos always have names. You remember those, you know. But we never found that name that fitted the project. For me, names should occur during a filming process. Or, 
you know, it's it's hard to come with names that fit with the project. You can say, you can give it a, a name and then you'll be like, okay, but that doesn't fit with the whole two years that I just did. So eventually we just decided to don't give it a name and the name that kind of sticks with the whole project now is the Adapt Team video. It sounds maybe corny and cliche, but it is what it is. It's like we filmed for Adapt with the team and that's what it is now. It's called the Adapt Team video, unofficially. Last question 2.0. What do you do with your skates and the skates f from the skaters that you film to make them sound that way? Is it all post-production? Like when they land, did you do you level up the landings or something? I kind of feel like Velo is doing it. I don't know. Maybe it's just me to make it look more solid, but maybe it's just me. Do you do that? Or it's just, or are they just that solid? So, uh, you asked me if I do post-production on the sound when this case land, but I don't think anybody does it in the rollerblading world. Maybe just skateboarders do that, but I think it's just the symmetric wheels, bearings, and uh, frames. And this is not a plug to get you to buy symmetric wheels, bearings, and frames, although you should because they're actually the best there, there are. Um, uh, but everything on adapt is different than any auto skate they're not plastic they're carbon um, the frames the plates uh, they're made from a different material and every time Levy also the whole team rides flat nobody rides anti rocker Rick did for the beginning but he changed that too um, riding flat also absorbs a shock better so it sounds better and I think also with the whole way Peter made this years and years of study and practicing, he made this perfect. And I love it when my boys land because other brand skates, I'm not going to name names. If you hear skates, they sound like fucking Legos, plastic, making squeaky noises on the cuffs and all that stuff. I don't get it. I do not get how brands do not fix that in these years. Like they don't care about it and adapt us. So, um, I love the skates, the best skates that I ever had on my feet. And this is not because I'm working for Adapt, but I never have like tingly feet after a couple of hours of wearing them. And any other skate in my life, I had that problem with, and I've been skating for 24 years. So these skates and the wheels and the bearings and the, the frames and everything, they're the best. And I just love them, man. Yeah, questions, 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 questions are over. And that's it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, the way that we did this video is I made all these questions, I sent them to Kevin and he was the one editing this video. So if this video is edited a little bit different, it was edited by him. So if you like whatever he's doing, don't forget to buy the video. Like, I guess it's going to be cool. It's been a few years in the make, so gotta be something cool and that's it if you did like this video do not forget to give me some thumbs up if you didn't like it give me some thumbs down but let me know what you don't like about it what did me and kevin and the rest of the team adapt did wrong here <laughs> other than that let's just not forget why we all started skating because it's fun cheers guys